الجزء ده بعد ما عملنا الايكوليبريم العادي بتاع الرجل بلان بيساوي اوت بوت وفهمنا المفاهيم الفيري سيمبل الكتاب بيكمل صفحه 192 if you look the book is giving you real life uh, consumption function على الاكس اكسس الديسبوزبل انكم بير كابيتا على الواي اكسس التوتال كونسمشن بير كابيتا وجمال هذه البيانات انها راجعه من سنه 1962 لحد سنه 2006. So what you notice is uh, our projected line, our projected consumption function, اللي estimated function. An equation of, the, of a straight line that achieves the best fit. وهتلاحظوا ال best fit دوت يعني نشر التقريب ما بين كل النقط السوداء كل سنه. That shows on an individual level, disposable income per capita increases, and the total consumption per capita increases as well. طبعا the source of the كلام ده كان the Bureau of Economic Analysis, the Federal Reserve Economic Data. وبي ورها لك على أساس إن أنت بتعملها. تعرف إن the consumption function ده is a very realistic thing. بس حاجة من الحاجات اللي نادرة جدا طبعا. في الايكونومكس انك لما تيجي تتنبا بسلوك يطلع لك از ستريت لاين ذات بريتي انترستنج ومن الحاجات النادره هتكتشف uh, انك في الكتاب بيدي لك الكونسمشن فانكشن ان ريليشن تو ذا ديسبوزبل انكم ومدي لك منها السيفنجز والماني وبنس تو كونسيوم ومقدر لك شويه في الكلام ده هو ويتش از فيري انترستنج So a fair reading of the book, طبعا بيزود الرياليزم بتاع الموضوع. The consumption function لحد هنا كانت very simple. الكتاب بعد كده بينقل إنه يبتدي يفكر في the consumption function دي مش as a function of income, لكن as a function of disposable income. النقطة اللي بعد كده سلسلة من المعادلات الكتاب بيديها. عشان يوري لك ازاي انك انت هتوصل للديسبوزبل انكم من الانكم العادي. ما هو الديسبوزبل انكم اللي انت بتاخد على اساسه قرارات السعر؟ فهتخصم منه التاكسس وهتخصم منه الترانسفيرز. فالايكويشن رقم سبعه كانت بتورينا ان الانكم هتشيل منه التاكسس والترانسفيرز. بس طبعا كان في شويه اسامبشنز هنا. انه للتسهيل في الاول خالص خلى الترانسفيرز ارقام ثابته آه وليتر اون بعد كده هيرجع يخلي التاكس ريت دوت جزء آه يعتمد على آه الانك او نسبه من الانك فلما جيت تشوف المحاضرات اللي احنا عملناها اور تاكسس ويز نوت ويز نوت نمبر ذات از ابسولوتلي Fixed or autonomous. Our taxes had a tier ratio of zero, as I am doing with you in class. We have a tier out of the whole income, meaning we have a tier out of the whole income. We are not progressive. 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 وبعدين المنظر في حاجة الكونسيوم بس لما جابوا منه الديسبوزبل انكم وبايكويشن 8 بتوصل هتوري لك ان ده الجزء الثابت طب الديسبوزبل هو ايه هو الانكم العادي جي دي بي او الاوتبوت زائد الترانسفيرز اللي هنفترض فيها بعد ما رقم ثابت ناقص التاكسس ان الكتاب هنا هو عكس اللي احنا عملنا في المحاضره احنا ملتزمين بالمحاضره رقم هنا هو بيقولها لك ان هو هيبتدي يبقى رقم صفر بتختصر المعادلات دي من سبعه وثمانيه وتبتدي تجمع الصوابق كلها في ناحيه عشان تطلع بحاجه بسيطه جدا لحد دلوقتي طبعا التاكس ريت دوت مفيش تاكسس رقم ثابت وخلاص عشان يوري لك ان الصوابق كلها اللي احنا بنديها دي تعمل ايه بلس المارجن اوف بريس اوف كونسيوم مضروبه في الواي Uh, if you look at the graph, which is given afterwards at a page, uh, page uh, 200 in the book, page 200, it shows you the consumption function in blue. Uh, 
as a function of dispositive income, given that the taxes and the transfers are all autonomous, they are constant number. And then we add to it all the other stuff, I, investment, which is autonomous, G, government properties, which is autonomous, net exports, which is also to some quality in this model, is autonomous. Now, they are all autonomous numbers, added to the autonomous consumption, and what you end up with, the blue line shifting up by IG and net exports, and it gives you uh, the black line, yeah. which is your aggregate demand in relationship to income. Now you draft your, uh, your capital degrees line, and at point E, you have the equilibrium. To the right of this equilibrium, any change in inventory is positive. To the left of this equilibrium, any change in inventory is negative. In months, according to Keynes, there's only one uh, equilibrium level, which is Y, O. So then to represent that equilibrium graphically, given all those uh, extra uh, variables, which are mostly autonomous, Equations 10, 11, and 12 on page 200 of your book shows that at equilibrium, meaning the output to be equal to aggregate demand, put the equation output is equal to, of course, an autonomous number A plus the money produced to consume times Y, and you end up with the equilibrium condition given by equation 12. Uh, the good thing about equation 12 is, in a very simple way, you end up with a, a deduction of what the multiplier would look like. Because equation 13 in your book tells you any change in that autonomous component, A, any of its components, if any of those change, you will have a change in output by another one. So actually one over the savings, uh, marginal potential to save, or one over one minus the marginal potential to consume, is at this stage your multiplier. Uh, but remember, this is just a very simple uh, representation because so far your taxes is an autonomous number in reality. Uh, but of course, depends also on income. At this point, what you want to do is review, and I would suggest to part of it, have a dialogue with you, and watch some of those videos about aggregate expenditure, how to plot the five degrees line, with the meaning of equilibrium, and so on. Thank you. Hi, this video is going to go over the aggregate expenditure line in reference to the 45 degree line on the graph with real GDP and real aggregate expenditure. So when you draw the 45 degree line, it's just going to be a line at 45 degrees and it shows you at every point where real aggregate expenditure equals real GDP. So we're going to label that as Y equals AE. So then we have to draw our aggregate expenditure lines. And so what happens is we have some positive amount of consumption that occurs regardless of what real GDP is in the economy. And then as real GDP increases, we see consumption increasing. Also, we have a planned investment amount going on in the economy regardless of what GDP is. So we can add that in. This is C plus I. We also have government spending, C plus I plus G as well as net exports, C plus I plus G plus NX. So this shows how aggregate expenditure can be different from real GDP if these points aren't equal. Where these lines cross, or where this line crosses in particular, is the equilibrium amount, where aggregate expenditure is equal to real GDP. So if we aren't at that point in our economy, then we aren't in equilibrium. So let's talk about that for a second. As you probably could guess, aggregate expenditure could either be higher or lower than this 45 degree line 
which shows us equilibrium. So let's first imagine the aggregate expenditure is higher than real GDP. So what's going on here? We're spending more in the economy than we're producing. So if we're spending more, we're consuming more, our expenditure is more, what's going on is we're buying more stuff in the economy than is being produced. So in this case, business inventories drop. Businesses have inventories saved up over time, and since we're spending more than is being produced, these inventories get used up. Businesses have less stock in their warehouse, that sort of thing. Because these inventories are being used up, businesses want to replace them. They replace them by producing more stuff, so real GDP goes up. And that should make sense because aggregate expenditure is greater than real GDP that results in an increase in GDP. Now what about the other side? If aggregate expenditure is less than GDP, then we actually have a buildup of inventories. So businesses are storing more than they had planned on storing. This means that they're going to restrict their production because they have too much inventory and they can't sell it. As they reduce their production, we see real GDP drop. And this should make sense. If aggregate expenditure is less than this equilibrium GDP amount, we're going to see real GDP drop. 